uh, exactly the same way you treat any other organ, no matter what's wrong with it. The first thing you ask is, what's the power supply to the organ that's malfunctioning? And then you go measure it and reconfirm that indeed it's low, and essentially it always is. So what you need to know then is that the macula of the eye it gets its uh, voltage from the spleen stomach circuit. And by the way, I didn't mention to you, but there's a loop of batteries. One set of stack of batteries goes up, and one turns around and goes back down. So the spleen stomachs, uh, the spleen circuit starts in the big toe, comes up the inside of the leg, goes up, uh, and uh, then uh, in the head it joins the, what's called the stomach circuit, turns around and goes back down to the foot. So uh, that uh, combination of things creates what's called a Tesla resonating circuit, which we have neither the time nor the illustration capability to talk about it on the show. But nevertheless, it creates a, uh, a known electronic uh, device called a Tesla resonating circuit. So the point is that if you have macular degeneration, you ask the question, what is the power supply to the macula? Well, it's the stomach circuit in almost all cases. So you go measure the stomach circuit, and you'll find it has low voltage every time. So then you have to ask the question, well, why is the voltage low in the stomach circuit? which explains why you don't have the ability to make new cells to keep the macula healthy. Well, it's usually a combination of things. It's most people who are, uh, have macular degeneration are hypothyroid, but it's usually undiagnosed. The reason, there are many reasons that hypothyroidism goes undiagnosed, but the main one is that doctors are trained to look at the test called TSH, and it's a very unreliable test. Um, in addition, the, in 2003, the American Academy of uh, Clinical Endocrinology said that it should be 0.3 to 2.0, and uh, but still each day when I get a lab report in and I've measured the TSH, it says that anything that's below 4.6 is okay. So the lab tests are 10 years late uh, updating their normals. So for example, if your test comes back 4.0, your doctor will tell you your thyroid's fine, but it's not fine. 4.0 is twice the 2.0 that it should be. And then there's another problem with thyroid uh, care, and that is that uh, that the active form of thyroid hormone is T3 at the cell membrane and T2 at the mitochondria. Uh, but doctors either measure TSH by itself or TSH and T4, but T4 has to be converted to T3. And to convert from T4 to T3 requires iodine, selenium, zinc, uh, uh, progesterone, cortisol, uh, glutathione, and vitamin C. And if you're deficient in one of those, instead of making T3, you make a fake hormone called reverse T3. Well, doctors almost never measure those things. And so you can be, you can have a completely normal TSH even with the updated normals and still be 80% deficient at the cell membrane level. So unless you measure T3 and reverse T3, you don't really know what's going on with the thyroid. And what you'll find is that most people who have hypothyroidism are have macular degeneration or hypothyroid. The other thing is that um, I mentioned that dental infections put out such severe toxins that they take down the acupuncture voltage. So um, it turns out that, as I mentioned, the, the power supply to the macula is the, primarily the spleen stomach circuit. And the teeth that are on that circuit are upper molars and lower premolars. And so if you uh, measure those teeth carefully, you will almost always find that there's decay either under a filling or a crown or worst of all, they have a root canal in one of those uh, eight teeth, then that's going to take down the circuit and contribute significantly to their macular degeneration. Uh, and usually if you find a tooth that's down, that is infected. If you go down and follow that circuit all the way to the foot, you'll find there's a scar across that circuit. So what commonly happens is that somebody falls off their bicycle when they're six and they get a scar across that circuit, which grounds it out and reduces its voltage. And since each tooth contains a pump that pumps fluid from inside the tooth to inside the mouth to prevent it from getting infected, it drops the voltage enough that that tooth tends to get decay. So you get a filling. That filling lasts oh, on average seven years, and then there's infection under it. So you get another filling that's bigger, and then another seven years to 10 years goes by, and you get another filling that's bigger, and then eventually your tooth breaks off and you get a crown. And that lasts a few years, and then you get another crown. And so by this time, you are uh, approaching uh, the age in which we began to see macular degeneration which by the way is harder to find through the early part of my career. You never saw macular degeneration except from people that were say 65 and older. But by the end of my career in ophthalmology, we were starting to see macular degeneration in people down in their forties. And of course now we understand why, because uh, they were having uh, uh, all this dental work done. And uh, with the addition of fluoride into, the, into our, uh, our food supply and into our water supply and into our dental uh, uh, toothpaste, et cetera, people became more and more hypothyroid because fluoride shuts down thyroid function. And so for all these reasons, they, we began to see younger and younger people having macular degeneration. And of course, the other thing that happened is that to make nitric oxide, you have to have stomach acid that works. 